our, our next session is a film trailer and uh, we have uh, Mansoor, the director of Shongram. He's going to you know, introduce uh, this uh, uh, trailer and speak to you a little bit about uh, the project and why he has done that and, and so on. Um, it's about Bangladesh uh, Liberation War. Uh, and you know, uh, especially it's, uh, it's uh, becoming more of an interest now. Uh, and everybody is more interested in the liberation work, you know, wanting to find out uh, what, what's happened and, and so on. So it's the right time that Monsoon has, uh, you know, taken this uh, project on. Um, it's not my project, so I can't say much, right? <laughs> I'll let the men speak, yeah? Good afternoon, uh, Assalamu alaikum and Namaste and Adab. Um, Ahmed al thank you very much for allowing me to come here today. I'm running a little bit late, so apologies, uh, technical difficulties with the DVD. But uh, basically, my name is Mansur Ali. Um, I'm the producer, writer, director of the uh, forthcoming feature film called Shongram. It's a romantic drama based uh, around the 1971 Liberation War. Um, it's actually by chance that I've produced this film at this given time, because I started on this about three years ago. And if you know of any of the situation, uh, what's going on in Bangladesh, or the Rather Liberation War, uh, it's a bit of a fluke, but I've been planning this for three years, so I kind of put my foot in there before what was going on, actually, so it's not the other way around. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to let you see the, uh, it's not actually the trailer, it's a sneak preview, because what we've done, we've shot the 1971 phase, we still have the India and UK phase, which is roughly about 10% left to finish. Uh, and we're in the planning stages of that. Um, I'll let you watch the sneak preview and then you're welcome to ask me some questions and I can tell you a little bit more about the process of filming uh, and the background of the film, so please enjoy. <laughs> an international collaboration. My script editor is a guy called Billy McKinnon. He's worked on piano, uh, Kate Winslet films as well. Um, he lives in Berlin. 
Uh, soundtrack was done by, by a Bangladeshi uh, American uh, artist called Armin Musa. Um, my DOPs uh, focus for love of everyone that I took from the UK with our own kits and uh, facilities as well. So, um, yeah, so uh, this is where we are at the moment. Um, I can tell you a little bit more about the background of the film, and you're welcome to ask me questions if you like. Yeah, feel free to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's fine. Okay, I can go to the background. The, the background really was um, I set up um, this uh, the script and the story. The idea was um, is loosely based on identity. Myself being, if you like, a second generation. I was born in Bangladesh. I came to the UK when I was two years old. Uh, I was fortunate to have my education here. I did a BA honours in film production about ten years ago. And I've been working on various projects, and the idea really was how can I make my first feature film as a producer, writer, director that I feel quite proud of, and at the same time I can do some form of social justice because that's what filmmaking for me was to kind of portray a different point of view or a voice. Uh, and so this was uh, my attempt to do somewhat of uh, justice or, or get some highlights or exposure, and it's aimed at uh, not just Bangladeshis in Bangladesh, but also at Bangladeshis throughout the world and also non Bangladeshis because in Bangladesh, Almost everyone knows what Shogram is or some kind of background interest, uh, interest or at least a point of view. Um, so really I thought how can I make a film that gives us a story or background on, on 71. So it's a fictional drama based around the uh, key factual events like the 7th of March when Sheikh Mujib made his speech, 25th of March when we have uh, Operation Searchlight commences and various other key points within that historical event. Right at the beginning of the film, we start off with the original 1971 NBC news clip, which cost us $6,000, which is a hell of a lot of money for a uh, low-budget feature. But that is an American guy, and he's strong in American accent. He sets the whole background between 1947 partition and the build-up to 71. So, um, and it's also a perfect way to introduce the film to a Western audience, a Western market, if you like. So technically, it's still a British film. Uh, as I said earlier, it's a romantic drama set between a Muslim boy and a Hindu girl in, uh, in a village in a uh, fictional place in Bangladesh. Um, and the main lead character, he himself, uh, is quite uh, unaware of the situations of uh, 1971 as it's building up because he's in the village and he's busy with his own, uh, his own life. And very slowly, the whole army, the movement, everything affects his own village. So he witnesses firsthand um, the atrocities, the genocide, whatever you want to call it, everything that took place. And he himself is forced to uh, become a freedom fighter. And because his love interest is a Hindu, she actually has to flee with her family as about 8 to 10 million uh, Bangladeshis fled. So uh, he has two objects now. One, uh, one goal really is the, his revenge is driven by revenge. Uh, that motivates the story. And the second is uh, to find the love of his life. And he can't do that until he fulfills his duties as a Bangladeshi, as a Bangladeshi, and as a son, uh, as a brother, as well, too. Uh, to take revenge. Um, the story starts off in the UK in the present time. It's a flashback. It's a ba British Bangladeshi on his deathbed talking to an English journalist. Uh, and the flashback is uh, the phase that you've seen, which is roughly 90% or more than 90% of the film. And then we wrap up back into the UK as well with the uh, actual story. So it kind of sets the whole tone. You have a, you, there's, a, there's a journey, there's, there's an identification with the lead character that you can have. Um, and there's a full international uh, cast, majority of them are in Bangladesh of course, we use uh, local artists, local uh, crews as well in Bangladesh and then it starts and finishes back in the UK with an uh, English uh, crew and one member from the, the Bollywood industry if you like. Uh, and that's really about it, I hope that gives you a background on what, we, uh, what I'm trying to achieve and I'll take your question now. Thank you for those questions. Hi, Um I saw my hair done. Uh, I saw Mati right now. Um, so what's your different perspective? It looks like the the, the Bangladeshi fairy tale, you yeah. know? I saw Mati right now. I don't get the question. How, what, where was what's that? Uh, you, you said that you had a different perspective. It's a different perspective. First of all, uh, I'm a British Bangladeshi. That should be enough. Because it's a British Bangladeshi point of view. Any film you make is a point of view. So this film is a point of view from my, from my understanding what happened. Moti Maina was not a romantic drama uh, set during the liberation war. Mo Mo uh, Moti Maina, sorry, is, is, is a totally different point of view, a totally different uh, perspective. Sorry, sorry, I meant just about the war. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's a romantic drama based during 1971. Any other questions? Hi, uh, um, I wanted to ask, um, you decided to take on this massive subject of the liberation war. 
and then you've thrown in this uh, romantic aspect of it, which is first you've got the uh, issue between the Pakistanis and the Bangladeshis, and then you've got this whole other issue with the Indi you know, the Hindus and the Muslims. What made you want to tackle two such massive subjects in in one film? Sure. Uh, the first thing is the moment we talk about Bangladesh, we have this misconception. We're always talking about Muslims, uh, and I really want you to tackle that. And secondly, uh, on a practical level, if I talk about a war in 1971, realistically, who cares? But the moment we say there's a romantic element, romantic drama element, so that makes it something a little bit more appealing to people. Uh, so that was done creatively to make the uh, story more appealing and to gain a more wider audience because unfortunately most part of filmmaking is that you need distribute distribution and you need to make sales from it as well. Um, and again, if you're telling most uh, young people about 1972 in Bangladesh, most people would not be interested to hear. So the idea was to tell the story but not in a lecture type of way, more of a creative entertaining type of way. I think some of us, some of us have been really um, lucky to be part of the kind of seeing it from the really early stages and developing, and it's really exciting that it's nearly done. Um, and I just wondered, in the last three years, what are the major kind of changes you've made and kind of decisions that you've had to take in terms of like the narrative, but also style. I mean, I, one of the things I struck by that. Uh, I guess a large proportion of it is going to be in Bangla. So, was that a decision that you made to do that, or did you, you know, was there, you know, a particular reason why you did that? Yes, um, the I think it was my ninth or tenth draft version of the script, uh, and the thing of doing a uh, working on a feature film that's uh, a period based. Whenever you're writing a script, you, you think of something in the screenplay and then you have to check continuity if that sort of thing existed because I was not like in 71. Uh, there's lots of changes that went uh, along the way from the actual narrative of the uh, story where we were going to have something fully uh, in that period, 1971, but then we thought, how do we make it more relevant? Hence, having someone uh, on the deathbed talking um, and then linking, linking that to 71. The question about language, um, I, I always believe international films have a fuller flavour if you listen to them in the authentic language. Uh, if, I, if you see Bangladeshis or Indians or anyone talking uh, in, in, in English, the, the accent, tone kind of can uh, alienate people. It's, and it, sometimes it comes across as, as a, as a uh, humorous thing, so people don't take it seriously. And most importantly, um, if I did not have a film about 1971 in Bangla, it defeats the purpose of the, uh, exactly. the language. Yeah, I'm really glad that you did it. Yeah, and uh, it, we have Bangla and Urdu in the film as well. So while we were um, shooting the film, we had someone on standby, uh, one and a half guy, one guy that was always there, and the other guy was whenever he can uh, drop, drop by. But just making sure that the vocabulary uh, was correct. For example, when I uh, would say Desh, they would say Zameen. In order to say they wouldn't use that vocabulary, so I, I put in my script, um, it's Desh Mekon, so you would say it's not Desh the vocabulary, it's the mean because that's the word for country or land, and uh, it differentiates from the uh, obviously from, from Urdu to Bangla again. Why the need to have the MPC clip? And it cost you so much. I mean, could you just explain back to that? Welcome, Slam. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, the Again, it's a practical decision and it's also how do I set the scene because 1947 was a massive, massive point in time in history um, because uh, India was uh, one of the richest colonies, if not the richest colony uh, that Britain held during uh, 1857 Battle of Mutiny. Around that period, Britain had the option to um, hold on to America or India because he was having uh, troubles in America as well. Uh, and they decided purely on the wealth that we will hold on to India because you know this is where the money is. So if I suddenly start talking about 1971, I do myself great injustice without giving the background of where this 1971 came from. Because if you look at it, the whole issue of 1971 was bound to happen if you look at the, uh, what happened in 47. So in 47, uh, the partition of the Muslim Hindu separation, Bengal separation, is very, very wide and, and deep. Dr. Ahmedullah will have far greater knowledge uh, uh, on that than myself. Uh, and the other idea was that um, in this one minute clip, I can give my audience the whole background, how this 71 led and how, this, how why and how there was a build up to this. And secondly, uh, as I said, this is, a, this is a white American chap speaking. So immediately I'm appealing this film 
to Western audiences. And that was the idea, how do I get their attention immediately? How do I make sure that it's something that they, they can hook on and they can watch? Uh, hi, um, I, I know that you said that this is a, a fictional film, a romantic film, but how do you deal with essentially, as, as we've seen in the last few months, uh, a hugely contested um, cultural space? People are fighting over the narrative of Bangladesh as we speak right now. Um, I mean, the fact that uh, you're talking about a Hindu and a Muslim. Uh, where you have the dominant party in Bangladesh accusing its opponents of stoking up anti-Hindu sentiment and then equally and vociferously denying that. Um, how do you deal with that contested narrative? I don't deal with that in my film at all. I deal with it in the film, as I said, because it's a fictional film and I uh, wrote this film before this took place. The other way to look at it, if you like, is any... Um, Every single time we open our mouth, we, we, we come with a point of view or an opinion. So uh, for me, it was important that I can lay the fa uh, factual background of the narrative of 71, and then I have other elements that follow into it which are fictional. So the idea was not, again, to make a big political statement, because this, uh, in no way, shape, or form is this uh, any political, uh, politically affiliated with any group or point of view. My idea was really to share what happened in 71. Uh, and again, of course, it's my point of view on what happened in 71 through my research. Uh, and I wanted to make this something that's entertaining, easy to, easy to watch, but it also has layers of the film. The film really is uh, allowing you to see um, uh, what happened in 71, but you should walk away with your own questions and hopefully you can do your own research and come up with your own conclusions. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I mean, your film is, in one sense, is photographic, so you can like Considering that all the atrocities that were done then, and your film is going to be quite graphic in that sense, most probably, the main protagonist, the Pakistani government, the army, who still denied, what do you think their reaction is going to be to your film? Um, first of all, um, it's not a political film again, uh, but it's, an, it's in a... It's not political, but... It's, I know, I, I understand what you mean. What my point I'm making, it's not a political film, but it's based in a heavily politicized era. So that's something I can't deny, I can't get away from that. Um, Secondly, um, what the Pakistani government now thinks about it, I honestly don't care. I felt like I needed to do something about this and that's why I've got off my ass and I wrote something and I produced something. Um, I'm not trying to show the Pakistani government in a negative shape or form, uh, but the thing is, um, it's something that's happened, whether we admit it or not. I'm not delving into numbers, if it was 3 million killed or 30,000 or anything like that, yes. Uh, I just want to show this is what's actually happened and for me it's a good enough reason to write a story and again as a British Bangladeshi I felt like it's my duty within the facilities uh, I've been given or the opportunities I have that I'm quite fortunate to be allowed to do this. I hope that answers your question. You probably read my own mind because uh, I was going to ask some questions on sure. uh, about 71 war itself. You emphasized a number of times as a fictional story yet you've done a lot of research on the 71 war. What percentage of your film relates to the 71 war? And is that fictional or functional? And you've taken the authentic stories from people who suffered in the 71 war. Thank you. Um, I have not sat down and calculated percentage-wise, but I can give you some kind of an understanding of it. The research was done that in the fictional phase, uh, when a uh, certain action scene takes place or certain genocide took place, how that took place and what the eyewitnesses saw. So for example, there's a scene in the film where the villagers are called over and they're told to have a uh, general meeting with the, the army personnel. And the moment they come into the actual grounds, they're all annihilated and this happened right next to my village in Jogandhapur. And I've heard that story since I was about six, seven, eight years old, I think. So that's always stuck in my head. The, uh, uh, the, the things that the army has did, there's a lot of... Um, Again, it's, it's very difficult in, in, in a feature film to kind of address all these issues, but there's a lot of things that I would account that they did. I even spoke to uh, um, a Bangladeshi Hindu lady, a uh, senior lady, who said to me that, um, this was at one of your events actually, um, when, she, when she was uh, at the end of the war, the Pakistani soldiers were all uh, escaping because of the Mukti Bayani and the Indian army was coming, and one of the Pakistani soldiers uh, uh, fell at the... Um, on the bonnet of a car, and then uh, came screaming and running to her and saying, Ma, Ma, Mother, Mother, forgive me, we did not, we did, uh, we didn't realize what we did. 
So that was something quite refreshing. But um, I tried to portray some of that in my story by having a character who's seeing all of these things that's actually happening, but uh, he, he's not directly getting involved, and at the same time, uh, he can't stop it as well because he's not a senior person. So um, there are a lot of these elements that I've had to put in and again make them creative and fitting within the main narrative of the story. Thank you. Um, related questions. What are you thinking of working on next? And tied to that, are there things that you ended up not being able to do in this film that you're saving for the next project? Yes. Um, when you write a script, thank you actually, because yeah, there is a big challenge. I, I forgot about the uh, question about challenges I uh, asked. When you write a script, you think you have a multi-million pound budget, so you just let your mind go. Then you have to keep putting yourself back. Can I, can I afford this? Can I, is this feasible? Is that feasible? Um, and also the time scenario, which uh, kind of pinched us quite badly. We had, we had a, a scene with a tank. Um, and that was to, uh, there's a short little scene with the tank, which we still shot all the other scenes around it, but the whole tank uh, shot, we found very, very difficult to get in Bangladesh, purely because of what's happening at the moment. Uh, so that was a slightly bad timing, but um, well, we've managed to get some other CGI material and talked to some other graphics company to get around it. Um, so it doesn't affect the story in any way, but that was one of the things. So again, um, Practicality uh, for my next film is, is going to be quite a big, uh, big, big agenda. It's going to be one of my first agendas, which already was here, but sometimes again, uh, see, filming in Bangladesh, some things are ridiculously easy, and some things are ridiculously hard. I give you an example. We were on location. We had generators. We had about five large lights. I took these lights from the UK. The generator popped because you have the uh, fluctuation because these are on. Uh, the same kind of generators that you would have in uh, feature films in Europe, for example. So now I've got no lights, and I can't get these lights in dark or anywhere, so I have to get these lights couriered and flown in from the UK, which costs a hell of a lot of money. The light box cost about £9, the delivery on each one was about £75, to give an example. Uh, the other beauty of shooting in Bangladesh is you literally go somewhere, uh, and I shot the whole film in Select, by the way, you literally go somewhere in Select, and you say, right, I want to film over here, and then you find out who owns this place, bring them around, invite them for a cup of tea, and within half an hour you're filming. <laughs> so that's the beautiful thing about filming incident. Uh, and, I, and I totally loved it. Everyone was really, really welcoming uh, in incident. Uh, coming back to your first question, my uh, next feature film is a uh, supernatural thriller. Um, yeah, supernatural thriller, and it's loosely based around uh, biblical Quranic issues. Uh, which I've been researching for the last 10 years, and that was supposed to be my first feature film, actually. Uh, and I could do that on a shoestring budget, because I, can, I need maximum 20 to 30 days to film. Uh, again, being practical and creative about how, how, how we produce this, but yeah, thank you. Where's that going to be set? UK, it's a full UK British film, yeah. I, I've had enough of 1971 for this production. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't mentioned when you're going to release this film. And it's going to be on DVD or no, uh, we, we're planning, for, uh, I'm talking to distributors, we're planning for theatrical release to have a launch on the 16th of December in Bangladesh, uh, and around that time to have a, a release in the UK, and again, theatrical release in cinemas, whether that would be for the big uh, chains or the independent cinema, well, that's still to be decided. Um, and that would be around December time in the UK, and then the, the TV and DVD, everything else will follow. If you want more information, guys, uh, you can go to shomram.com, S H O N G R A M.com. I'm going to hand the mic over because I think I've taken a lot of his time, but you're welcome to come and approach me and ask me some questions. Thank you for your time.